Hello everybody, this is Kasia Kalainz, your functional medicine nutritionist. Um, I want to discuss Zyfaxan, SIBO, IBS, and FDA today. Uh, I want to update you on it. SIBO is a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and Zyfaxan or Rifaximin is a medication of choice for SIBO, and that's probably how you know about it, how you've heard about it. Uh, just a reminder that I'm a clinician, I'm a licensed nutritionist, I'm not a medical doctor, so I cannot prescribe medications, but I'll explain later why uh, I'm so familiar with it. So, Zyfaxan or Rifaximin is very expensive, it's an antibiotic that runs over $1,000 per a two-week supply that you need for um, treatment of SIBO uh, traditionally. You need uh, 550 milligrams three times a day for 14 days. And originally, which you may not know, is that uh, Zyfaxan was used for um, travelers' diarrhea. And um, according to studies, it had the ability to clear the travelers' diarrhea symptoms in 70, over 79% of the patients. <clears throat> So, uh, but as I said, most people don't know about it. Most people are familiar with it because of the popularity or the explosion of information about SIBO or SIBO. Uh, now, recently or this year, earlier this year, FDA approved uh, Zyfaxan or Rifaxamine for IBS driven uh, by diarrhea or diarrhea driven IBS. And <laughs> Most recently, we started to see uh, commercials for Zyfaxa. <laughs> very confusing, very odd. Um, as the assumption being that if you have IBS, you the treatment for IBS now is Zyfaxan. So that's why I am drawn to putting this post for you, just because I want to educate you a little bit about what it is and what it isn't. So you don't jump on this wagon, run to the gastroenterologist and ask for Zyfaxan for your IBS. So, by the way, my three cents is that I think United States of America is the only country that allows direct-to-consumer advertising for medical um, uh, medications, pharmace pharmaceutical med medications. That's just my three cents. I don't think it's right. So... The first question is, uh, should Zyfaxan and IBS be synonymous? Because that's the assumption, that's what you're going to hear again and again in that advertisement. Well, if you look at the studies, there's a high percentage of IBS uh, driven by diarrhea that may be, in fact, post-infectious. There's studies with um, the veterans returning from deployment from Afghanistan or Iraq, and a lot of them get IBS, get post-infections. Uh, IBS, um, if you've ever had diarrhea that you think was driven by food poisoning or some kind of poisoning from food or water, uh, dr drinking water that was uh, um, unsafe, <clears throat> then there are higher chances that you might develop IBS. But that's not the whole story. IBS may have nothing to do with it. If it's indeed IBS, you know, diagnostically, over the years, sometimes gastroenterologists may give you a label of, of IBS if they're not quite sure what to do with it and it kind of fits into some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, there's a list of uh, sorry I'm, I'm missing the word um, some of the criteria uh, for IBS and that's what's been a diagnostic code so far uh, there is a new test, blood test that you can do for IBS, but that's a different story, not for today. <coughs> so, so we know that if you have a pathogenic infection, uh, according to animal studies that have been done recently, it may not be that pathogen itself that creates the envir environment for IBS, but the toxins excreted by that pathogen. It was studied in animals and confirmed so if you have Campylobacter, for example, long after Campylobacter has been gone, you may have the toxins in the system and they can induce IBS symptoms. <coughs> so, so what I would say, don't assume that if you have IBS, Zyfaxan, um, 
is the treatment and the solution for it, um, do your due diligence, first of all. Um, this is where a good evaluation comes in. This is where you want to talk to a, a skilled clinician, either an integrative, uh, functional gastroenterologist. There are very few of those, I understand. Maybe a, a more experienced integrative medical doctor, or maybe a very experienced and um, skilled licensed clinical nutritionist. <coughs> There's a few of us, again, not very many, but we are there for you to serve you. And the, you want to be assessed for IBS uh, through the, the way we do it in nutrition. Um, symptomology is some of the things we, we look at. We try different things with foods and fiber or probiotics or different agents to see what fits your profile or not. We know where you should get better or worse. So there's a lot of things that we can do as nutritionists to help you evaluate what's going on, why you have symptoms that look like IBS. Is it really IBS or not? We can diagnose. We don't have the legal right, but we can help you get on the right path and get to the root cause of why you have symptoms. And if we suspect that there may be infection like SIBO, then definitely I would say before you run for Zyfaxan, um, go and get tested. Um, well, the truth is that you may have diarrhea, you may have IBS and diarrhea, and it may be running because of because you have um, some people have refractory diarrhea. It's hard to understand why. Some people have a, a gallbladder removed, and then you have bile that is um, that is causing um, irritation and has a laxative effect. Um, in the colon, and maybe that's what's running the diarrhea. So maybe it's food poisoning. Maybe, maybe it is food poisoning. Maybe it's food, uh, re food reactivity, so food sensitivity or allergies. Uh, so maybe it's just that it's very poor dwindling colonic microbiome. So you don't have enough good bacteria to actually serve your colon and and protect it from that from a flashing diarrhea. So bottom line is. Um, Working with IBS patients over several years, I noticed that everybody has a different story. We have to find the story. We have to look for the root cause of the symptoms to see if dietary changes, lifestyle changes, supplementation helps arrest symptoms, or if we need to test. So this is really, really, I wanted to hear you. I wanted you to hear this. Um, it's really, you know, there's no... No medication that is a complete cure for anything. There's reasons for things to happen, and we, we need to understand them. Uh, because even if you get on Zyfaxan, there's more story behind afterwards that I will explain in a second. So proper evaluation is very, very important. <coughs> and next question is IBS, SIBO, SIBO, IBS. So chicken and an egg, what's first? Well, people with IBS, true IBS, have a higher risk of developing SIBO. Um, or people with SIBO have a higher risk of actually having IBS. So, um, so I would say definitely find somebody who can provide you with a breath test. It's a one-time test. You, you have to drink a lactulose solution, so it's sweet. It can cause a little bit of bloating gas because if you have SIBO, you're actually feeding it, and every time you feed it, you feel worse, that's, that's when you have the SIBO symptoms. So you just have to bite the bullet, do it once, and then you breathe the air um, during a couple of hours afterwards, and that's all. You have to follow certain restrictions 24 hours before, dietary restrictions, um, and maybe two weeks or one week. There are certain supplements that you should avoid, especially related to changes in your motility, so magnesium, for example. So there will be instructions provided and then you have black and white result whether you actually have SIBO or it's something else. And that's really, really, uh, I think it's priceless. You want to test and not guess. It's not very expensive. It's less than $200. And so the, the, um, <coughs> the problem is that um, there's not many doctors that provide it on site where you can go, like at Hopkins, for example, um, literally next door to where I live. We have Dr. Mullen, he has a clinic. Uh, if you're his patient, you can, uh, unfortunately, he doesn't take new patients, I have to warn you, not even mine. And 
And so you can walk in and have the breath test and you have the reading instantly and get the result. Um, if you live in a remote area of the country, you're not going to have a chance to find a doctor like that. It's not very common and it's not as uh, available as we would like to. And I think in another 10 years, it's going to happen. I believe that SIBO now is where celiac was maybe 20 years ago. So I think th the need is there and, um, and it's growing. But in the meantime, clinicians like me have available labs that are take home. Uh, we send you a kit. You follow instructions, you drink the solution, you blow in the bags, you send it off, so you do it at home. Um, so as I said, it's less than $200. Uh, we have that availability, and I will have that available soon on my website under the shopping, and so you can uh, shop for it and buy it, and I can send it to you, and you will know. And then you can proceed, you know, you, you, you know you have black and white, information about what's happening in your gut um, as long as you follow instructions. It's not 100% proof but it's pretty reliable and so I would encourage you to seek that out. There's two labs, Genova and Common, Commonwealth Labs. I have accounts with both of them just in case my patients need the uh, availability. So uh, how successful is Ifaxone actually if you do have SIBO and you decide to go that route? Um, many clinicians use uh, Zyfaxone, but as I said, it was cost prohibitive. And there was a time, <laughs> just recently, my patient told me she had to pay $1,200. Uh, so it is tough, but with FDA approval, it's going to run uh, by insurance. Hopefully, it's going to be easier. It's only for IBS diarrhea, though, not constipation. Dr. Mullen, uh, a year or two years ago, did a great study on actually herbal protocol. He's been using a particular herbal form formulation for a number of years. Um, he was doing that when we were working together at Hopkins um, already a number of, number of years ago. Um, and so it was at least as effective as Ifaxan. It was a short-term study, so we need longer-term studies to see what happens if there's recurrence. Um, can we, you know, what is the what is the track record of herbs as opposed to Zyfaxan? <clears throat> but it's a great start. And so what I have to tell you is, um, statistically, in terms of studies that were done, um, there was a study over 18 weeks uh, of Zyfaxan, 72 percent participants, patients. Um, let me see, 72 uh, percent patient responded. 36% uh, never relapsed. And I'm saying this, this is important information for you if you've never been treated, if you're considering, if you already have SIBO. Uh, this means that 64% will not resolve SIBO after the first treatment. Now, Dr. Pimento, um, who is one of the most important gastroenterologists doing a lot of studies uh, with SIBO and with IBS, is very involved. He's in his population of patients. He sees a ratio of seventy percent to thirty percent. And I would say in my clinic, uh, over the years when I've been working with Dr. Mullins, patients um, during their treatment as their nutritionist, I would see also about seventy thirty ratio. So most patients will will have recurrence. And so, if this is your first time, I don't want you to get discouraged. I want you to understand that. You really have to work with a clinician to walk you through it during the process because of the dietary needs, the supplement needs, just to understand what the process is. And so you don't, the doctor may not have the time for you. That's where a nutritionist comes. We do have that time we spend with you. We educate you and we hold your hand. So, um, so you don't want to get discouraged if you do it the first time and, and you didn't clear. You're just in the majority. And if you do clear and don't, re re and don't relapse, then you are actually a minority and you should count your blessings. So, so that you know, from my perspective, my clinical experience is sometimes, depending on the patient and what's happening, the story, the presentation, sometimes you start with um, Zyfaxan. Sometimes you will start with the herbal protocol, and sometimes patients do well in Zyfaxan the first time, but when they recur, maybe they start react to it. Um, although Zyfaxan has a low um, resistant rate, rate it, if, it, if there is a resistance um, developed to SIBO, it 
goes away within a week or so, I think very, very quickly. So resistance is not a problem, which is a blessing. And so what I see uh, with my patients is that sometimes, sometimes we flip, sometimes patients start on the herbs and do well, and then they have to switch to Zyfax and they don't do well. So sometimes one therapy uh, initially is good and then it starts not working so well. Sometimes there's less to tolerance to a particular protocol later. Uh, the herbs have to be changed. Sometimes herbs are not effective because of natural resistance. So it's a mixed blessing. It's a mixed bag. It's, it's, it's a gray area. This is where you really want to work with somebody because we have to maybe rotate the herbs. <clears throat> and if you have methane on top of that, that's a different story. That will be a different post for you. Uh, that gets even more complicated. So, so you don't want to get discouraged. That's my bottom line. You want to work with somebody who will explain it in your context. So <laughs> what happens is the first round, if you're working with Zyfax in the first round, maybe 10% improvement. The second round, maybe another 10 or maybe 15 or maybe 20. That's more common. If your success rate is like 50% improvement, wonderful. Now what happens after that is where you really need a clinician because there is a root cause and as you're working through the therapy you also want to work on the root causes and prevention in future education tools there are certain things that need to be placed in place so after the therapy you can maintain the lack of relapse so let me see what else i wanted to tell you so yes yeah, so the bottom line is even if you have SIBO, you have IBS driven by SIBO, you do have access to Zyfaxan, you have the treatment, uh, just remember it's not straightforward and maybe ups and downs. It's a longer therapy, uh, two weeks on, two weeks off, maybe two weeks on again and two weeks off and retest, retest, retest. So <coughs> you really have to work with somebody who knows that and um, don't get discouraged. That's the the main idea and, and just don't don't jump into it before you test for for SIBO. Um, now again as I said if you have methane uh, typically the lactulose that you drink will also test for methane it's very important um, so it's a there it's archaic it's not even bacterium In bacterium it's a different different entity altogether and Zyfaxan doesn't treat it so that's a different story it's going to be a different post I'll, I'll tell you more about it. So if you have that, do not start on Zyfaxan itself, by itself. You need to talk to the clinician about the methane. Uh, you, have, you have to pair it up with um, another medication, or if you're doing herbals, you have to have herbals for both the SIBO and methane producing archaea. So in a nutshell, what do you want to remember? Work with someone experienced. Don't do it alone. Get the test if you suspect it get tested, do not guess. Know the limitations of Zyfaxan, know that it's ups and downs and it may fit, it may not, and know that you can't rely on it alone if you have methane. Know that you have to still find the causes, why did you develop SIBO? It's not a disease, it's a syndrome of the gut being off balance or something causing it. It's not a disease like diabetes, it's just that Something is something else is always behind it. Sometimes a few things. There's a little page on SIBO on my website. It has a laundry list of different causes, and there's there's many more that I'll I'll, I'll be posting more about it for you in the future. Um, and again, remember if you have methane on top of that, you definitely have to talk to somebody to pair you up with another um, another protocol together for both. And that's what I wanted to tell you. So next time you see the ad, don't assume that this is a cure for all and that's, that's going to fix your IBS. It's more complicated. Any medication taxes your immune system and taxes your body. So before you jump on it, just talk to somebody, work with somebody and take care of yourself. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.